Good evening, everybody. My name is Reed Kroloff, and I am part of the gang here at the Chicago Architecture Foundation. I have some extraordinarily long title um, that has something to do with industry relations and senior advisors, but basically it means they trot me out when they have dignitaries like Helmut Jan to talk to. And uh, so I'm delighted to join you in that capacity tonight. Um, and um, we're very, very pleased to see all of you here, a sold out situation, um, which is a great testimony to, uh, testament to, uh, to Helmut, um, and also to you uh, as supporters of architecture uh, in the city that made architecture happen in the United States. This is why we live here. This is what makes this place so exciting. So thank you very much for being with us. We have a real treat tonight, a, a very, very significant architect in this city, but also around the world, who is our concluding uh, speaker in our architect series this year. Um, and I hope that many of you have come to those talks as well as other uh, of the, um, uh, the activities of the foundation. I hope everybody has had a chance to see the second installment of our uh, biennial exhibition. We had one in the, with the first biennial uh, as well. The fit, this is the continuation of our 50 Ideas for 50 Wards program. It's very exciting looking at ideas for how to improve each and every one of the wards here in Chicago. I hope also that everyone here has had an opportunity uh, to go and visit the biennial. It's up for a little while longer. Um, but uh, don't miss that. Um, uh, and I, th I can't remember, Woody, when does that close? January 7th. January 7th. January 7th, so you've just barely got a month, and it's a month full of holidays. So please do make sure you uh, go out and see that, and then come back and join us uh, in 2018 for a packed schedule of Chicago Architecture Foundation uh, activities that uh, we will be announcing in our online sources, in our, in our print material, online, uh, through emails, every way that we can communicate with you, we will. Uh, and we hope that we will see you many, many times in the spring, uh, winter and spring. But now, I'd like to introduce tonight's guest. I, he doesn't really need a whole lot of introduction uh, because Helmut Jan has been an extraordinary fixture uh, in the architectural firmament here in Chicago um, for quite a long time. But I will give you just a few facts, a few background facts in case you weren't aware of this. Um, most of it is available on uh, the Jan website. Um, Helmut was born in Munich um, and uh, studied, had the first part of his architectural education there at the Technik Technika Technische Hochschule, which in English is the Technical University. Sorry, my German is rusty because I don't use it very often. Um, where he studied architecture and then got into a strange series of life by the sixes. And I want you to pay attention, because no one has ever pointed this out before. <laughs> but Helmut graduates from the TU in 65 and comes to the US and then does graduate study at IIT, just down the road, from uh, beginning in 1966. He uh, then, in 1967, and this is where it starts, he joins CF Murphy, one of the, one of the great mainline old established practices uh, here in Chicago. Six years later, in 1973, he's appointed head of design at CF Murphy. So he starts college in 60, starts IIT in 66, goes to Murphy. In 73, he's appointed the head of the firm, head of the firm's design. And in 79, six years later, they changed the name of the firm to Murphy Yon. What do you think this means? <laughs> I am not sure, but that's three sets of sixes in a row, and I'll leave the rest for you to figure out. Uh, <laughs> could be, could be. The architecture that, you know, they said God is in the details, maybe it's the devil is in the details. But um, <laughs> since 1979, under Helmut's, first under Helmut's direction, and then with his name on the firm, which was eventually just changed to Jan, um, the office has completed dozens and dozens and dozens of projects all around the world many of which, I would say the majority of which, are significantly respected projects uh, and award-winning projects. Just about every building that they've done has been the recipient of 
more than one significant award in a variety of countries, um, every kind of building type, ranging from uh, the Sony Center in Berlin, which I was just discussing with Helmut, to airports in Bangkok and Cologne, office buildings all around the world, libraries, you name it, every kind of building uh, typology. Um, and we're fortunate because here in Chicago, there is a large trove of the firm's work. Um, some things very famous, some not, like the Thompson Center and the United Airlines, some not as famous, um, uh, but equally important, like Dorm at IIT and others, um, all highly respected works of architecture. And now, he's got a new project under construction, just blocks, or j under development, just blocks away on uh, Michigan Avenue, which has been called 1000M, which will be one of the tallest residential buildings in the city. Um, it's a dis it, to call it a distinguished career is, I would say, a bit of an understatement. Uh, I would say, instead, that Helmut Jan has had the career that every little architecture student in school dreams of having uh, and then has gone out and done it. So please help me welcome to discuss that career and his current work, Helmut Jan. Thank you, my, oops. Thank you very much, Reed. And uh, I think you forgot one thing, that I came here for one year. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell you. <laughs> I came here for one year, and, and I don't regret it. I don't think I could have done any better. Uh, and it wasn't just. Uh, what I did professionally, but uh, there were different steps. Uh, uh, McCormick Place burned down. I got in a leading role in doing that building, and uh, my former boss, uh, Gene Summers, left Murphy uh, so I could slide in his job. Uh, I must have done some things right, and that's what I'm still doing. I'm I still don't uh, think that I achieved and built the perfect building. <laughs> uh, I'm talking uh, tonight about a subject which is important, a subject which uh, 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 in the firm uh, uh, is actually the, uh, the major or the uh, the most uh, 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 used uh, building type, which is uh, building people, uh, buildings for living. Uh, and uh, I found out over the years that uh, providing a home is probably the most basic, but also the most complex problem of architecture. Because it's not about providing a shelter from the outside alone, but creating a residential space with a comfortable living experience which allows its inhabitant to define themselves and to express their identity by manipulating the environment around them. Uh, uh, this, this is uh, today, uh, uh, a very important uh, task for architects since the world population is growing very rapidly and there will be more younger and younger people uh, living in the cities and in urban centers. It's estimated that by 2070, 70% 70, uh, 70 of the world population will live in urban centers. Now the problem uh, uh, in the, is that these urban centers suffer from traffic congestion, from waste and pollution, except for high-end luxury housing, which is fueled by money and the global economy. There exists no or very little mass and mid-level housing needed 
to accommodate this need and to assume a quality of life for those masses. It's clear, therefore, that the times will have to change from architecture aimed at technology and grand spaces and big public buildings to an architecture of social consciousness and responsibility. Uh, I think the time of where we did those buildings uh, read, uh, uh, refer to, uh, they're, they're, they are not done in the same spirit, in the same quality, uh, but uh, we have to uh, uh, prove uh, through our work that social and urban issues can be reconciled with excellent design and tight budgets. Blair came and wrote recently in the Tribune that the influence of digital-driven modernism, which relies on advanced computer modeling, which creates spectacles, is waning. A new calm has to supplant the fre fre frenetic uh, invention of the arts. We have to, uh, 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 along these lines, try to bring modernism forward again to its revolutionary stage, where architectural references, construction, form, technology, art, and daily life lead to a technological and to aesthetic inventions, which make modern architecture uh, great again. Uh, the, the buildings I am showing you are actually uh, in a chronological order, and uh, uh, they started with, and this was after the McCormick Place time, with a house in Eagle River. Uh, uh, I have to say that uh, one of the clients was uh, one of the Murphys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I only did that house because I was obviously not interested to win a house. I was not interested in living. I was interested in doing architecture like we did in McCormick Place. And I demanded that when I come up with a design, that he had to accept it or I leave. <laughs> uh, 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 as, a, as a result, because she wasn't involved in the process, his wife left. <laughs> uh, well, this, this, uh, this, this house obviously was in a very interesting site. You know, it, it was the time, the start of postmodernism. It had that uh, 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 historic cornice, and it is a, 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 a relentless cube in the colors of the season, the white of winter, the, uh, the uh, green of spring and summer, and the red of the fall. And uh, it, uh, it uh, uh, makes a, a spectacle about of its site. And it uh, it's, uh, was finished in the early 70s, and uh, it's still standing. Changed the owner several times, and everybody seems to love it and appreciate it. Uh, uh, from there, a big jump. This was in the mid uh, uh, late 70s. We did a, a mixed use building in New York. The majority of the building, it's called City Spire. It's between uh, 57, 56, and 55th Street. You look in on the slide east. Uh, it's, uh, it was a time where 
the attention was more to maximize the zoning envelope and then to, uh, there was not the same sophistication in terms of what was expected for the apartments. Uh, uh, in difference to the buildings we did, in the context of New York, it, uh, it uh, was a stone building. It was, uh, with its top, uh, um, uh, a neighbor to all those buildings from the 20s and 30s to have a celebratory spirit and uh, to express uh, uh, that great life uh, which uh, those times had in terms of uh, uh, a livable city which where everything still was in order. Uh, 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 in, uh, there's a big jump uh, fr from here because in, the, in that time between just 80s and, uh, and uh, this is the mid 90s when this was planned. This is uh, the apartment building, the condominium building in the Sony Center in Berlin. And uh, uh, at, at this point we had very much advanced in terms of our knowledge, how to use technology, how to combine architecture and engineering. Uh, this was a time when uh, I learned more than I learned in school, especially from uh, my colleague uh, Werner Sorbeck, uh, who is an engineer in Germany who first collaborated with us about uh, five, six years before this building was done on the Bangkok airport. And not only collaborated, but he made uh, these ideas we had with a fabric roof, with uh, glass walls in a tropic climate. Uh, he made those work, uh, and he made those affordable and buildable. And uh, so th this was a, um, um, a rebirth in thinking back that architecture needed this collaboration. Uh, it needed um, that knowledge of the engineers, both in terms of uh, structure and climate, uh, 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 brought in at an early stage. And uh, this, at the end, determined uh, the, uh, the uh, construction and the technology of the building, and last and not least, through its, uh, the way these parts are built together, uh, determines the aesthetic. Aesthetic was not the primary generator, but it was the performance of a building. And I think this is so much missing today in buildings which are just uh, uh, draped with uh, curtains and, um, and don't uh, respect uh, these tasks and these issues. The, 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 the most visible part of, uh, uh, and, and I'm not going to explain the Sony Center, I could give a lecture on this alone, but uh, 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 on this building was actually that uh, it, uh, in, in difference to the earlier building, it showed the integration between facade, structure, and ultimately leading to a sustainability and in terms of living uh, uh, provided uh, 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 these conditions which I was talking about of flexibility in creating your own environment. You know, the, the, this uh, need to be integrated and mediate between the exterior conditions and the desired interior condition. That was the goal. Uh, the, and uh, in order to achieve this, we had to harvest the natural and the free resources like daylight, sun, fresh air, uh, and improve the uh, inside and outside relationship. And, uh, and this was done through generous open windows, through doors, through French, or full balconies, or through lodges. Uh, this inside, outside 
uh, relationship is, is obviously something which is today even more achieved. I mean, you can see here uh, uh, no, the, the, these are bay windows. Uh, uh, the, 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 there's a, 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 a French balcony. Uh, there, 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 there are doors which open all the way. And uh, uh, the, this is not a, a wall which is a limit. This is a wall which opens. Uh, no, what, what made obviously this building very interesting was the fact that this is a landmark in Berlin. It had to be preserved and uh, that the sign did not restore the building, but the sign, the sign kept the building in, in its stage, which was damaged by the war. You see the bricks, which was uh, 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 cheap uh, uh, plaster walls put in front of it after the war, and re restoring uh, the, the, the entrance, and then putting it, uh, hanging it from a bridge and putting a glass wall in front of it, like a museum where you, uh, where you uh, uh, display uh, uh, a beautiful and uh, uh, worthy uh, 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 fixture. So uh, you know, here you see on the left you know, how this whole building is suspended. And why is it suspended? So there's historic rooms where no columns could go through. And, uh, and, uh, and the, the apartment that joins uh, 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 a public space, and uh, this public space is a, has a direct connection like 30 or 25 years later to the, to the, to the uh, uh, Thompson Center, uh, State of Illinois Center, as we called it when we built it, to, to, to create a, a public space on a building site, on a private site, you know, which, uh, which is a, 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 a task or a, a, we always set ourselves in every building, or almost we did. Uh, uh, th this is an apartment. Uh, 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 we did inside. I have to say that I lived there. I mean, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, and uh, and the, the, this this was a real effort to experiment on things which, 20 years later, we have never been able to do in a building. The, you see, the floor is out of glass, and so I dropped a lot of things in there. The glass never broke. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And, and, and you can see you know, the effect of the French balconies. There's a, because the building slopes, a, a, a slope uh, uh, on, on uh, there's a balcony, you can go outside, there are doors, and there are this glass space where you can go outside, and you have 180 degree views. And, um, uh, and uh, so here you look from the bedroom, uh, uh, to the living room, and uh, and then you look into the forum, and at night when you go to bed, you push a button, and uh, or you can also use your voice, uh, and uh, the wall becomes opaque. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, when the lights go on in the forum, you no, know, the 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 the, the building turns uh, uh, the colors. So it, it's, uh, in red and blue. I'm getting mixed up with my buttons here. And then when you turn on the TV, you know, that, that, uh, uh, then the wall uh, is under the V, and you and you got you you can reverse it, but uh, you get used to seeing it sometimes the right way or the wrong way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the only thing I do is watch a Formula One race, and it doesn't matter whether the car go around <laughs> one way or the other. <laughs> and and you see the 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 table is is fixed, and you can do. Anything work, you know, have a dinner. Uh, uh, the, 
the nicest, like every table, is when there is nothing on the table. No, 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 no. And we designed these chairs. And uh, and uh, this is the bathroom. No, so, so, the, 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 the you no, know, because there is glass on the walls and glass on the floors. I said we don't need a bathtub. So it's like an aquarium. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and uh, this is the toilet. <laughs> and uh, and and the, uh, this is the wash basin. You know, just a, a, a laser cut out of glass. And, and you see, there 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 are no uh, amateurs, and, uh, and no buttons, no faucets. You know, there there is little uh, touch controls. You know. The, the, and uh, when you turn off and on the li lights, uh, you use your voice. And, uh, and uh, the glass doors are touch controls. Uh, and if you're not fast enough, you get hit by them sometimes. <laughs> 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 that, 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 there's always, when you deal with technology, a learning curve. And, <laughs> um, and, and uh, uh, I think this is still uh, you know, the, 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 so when you come down the hallway from the elevator, you know the, the, there's a sensor from from your cart, and the door opens. So by the time you get there, is the door open? And and sometimes the door opens in the middle of the night. And, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, after all those years, uh, it still works and. And we got the box out. Uh, looking again in the forum, this is the building we, you know, uh, the apartment is actually not on the top. Uh, it's it's in the middle because you have the best views. You look out through the gates. Uh, 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 there's an, uh, uh, this is a condominium. This is a rental building, and the the, the uh, access through the forum and. To the outside, there are uh, uh, lodges which uh, have operable windows. There's inside folding doors, so you can you can uh, uh, create an environment where you have that space part of your living area or part as a separate area. And I think this is what I mean about creating flexibility in in, in environment. You know, that, that that apartment we did uh, it it it. it it works for one person. It works for a lot of people. It, it's a, it's it, it, it's a, it's something, you know, which uh, hasn't found its way into into commercial apartment buildings. Uh, and then uh, uh, this was uh, at, at that point we, we did almost exclusively work in Germany and in uh, uh, Asia. Bangkok and uh, some buildings in Tokyo, and um, uh, when this building uh, <laughs> was announced, uh, uh, Blair came and wrote at that time he's back from exile. <laughs> <laughs> Be because we we were we were turned into uh, forced into exile after we finished the Thompson Center at that time. <laughs> the state of <laughs> And it was a very healthy time, and we, 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 as uh, Reed pointed out, I think we used it very well, and mm -hmm. we had a lot of, lot of fun. And so, so, uh, this this was a competition among local architects. Uh, the the dorm at IIT, it's called now State Street uh, Village, and um, and uh, uh, th there was one competitor. Uh, and they had a construction manager, and uh, they uh, obviously, uh, in the deciding the competition, looked at the cost. And uh, after the competitions, we were, we were called in and said, we like your building, but it's too expensive. And the other competitor told, we like your price, but we don't like your building. <laughs> 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 well, we, we somehow made it work, you know, as you can see. You know. it, 
and uh, 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 and this was at that time uh, 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 you know, uh, the, the the first building planned uh, the student uh, uh, union by uh, Kohlhaus that time which we participated but we didn't get selected this w and I always called it facing Mies because this building is right across ground hall and uh, and uh, no, uh, and obviously, I s not like what Gene Summer said when he did my comic plays. He said to me once, "You know, we stood for the model," and he said, "You know, Mies would have done it the same way. <laughs> no, no, Mies would have not done it that way. You know, <laughs> and." Um, and be, because we, we, we wanted to prove that low-cost uh, housing, which student housing is, doesn't have to be a bad design, but can be enjoyable, comfortable, and architecturally uh, significant. Now, to resolve such a task, you have to do more with less. And I think uh, we, this building proves that it is possible. Uh, the, the, the design idea was because it's a very long building. It's, uh, it's next to State Street on the east side. The residential campus is further to the east. The academic campus is uh, to the west. That it created uh, these entry courts and uh, uh, alternating with uh, courts, with throughways who led to the other side of the campus. And uh, uh, it, it used that uh, uh, corrugated, uh, that profiled stainless steel, uh, which is uh, perforated in areas, as you can see in that entry, uh, which provides a wonderful play of light and reacts different like a screen, depending whether the sun or the light is in front of it in the in the morning, it's very transparent when you look through, through it because the sun is in the east. In the afternoon, it's totally solid and you don't see a, a difference. No. So th th this is all things uh, you can use with, with modern materials. You, know, you can use it today. We're doing this. Uh, uh, we did it in Bangkok with uh, textile. You know, we doing finishing up with Werner Sobeger, uh, uh, a 250 meter tall uh, 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 elevator test tower for Thyssen Group, who has a fabric uh, uh, facade, which depending whether the sun is in front of the building or behind the building, makes you read something very different. You know, the, the same technology then was used at uh, at uh, uh, what's called now the Schiff housing. Uh, 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 Harold Schiff uh, and his wife were strong supporters of this institution. And, um, and uh, it, it was only through his uh, support you know, that we became the architect and that we uh, also could build the building that it uh, became more than what it normally would have been. And you know, just about a month ago, or maybe two months, uh, time goes fast, uh, uh, there was the 10 years anniversary and uh, they invited me and I was in town and uh, it was a wonderful uh, 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 experience to see a mixture of the board members, uh, the supporters uh, and the residents Gasser you know, for some speeches and some lunch, and some drinks, and really appreciate uh, that uh, something like this could be achieved. Uh, well, uh, so we, my wife has a farm, and uh, and uh, and. Uh, She's been somewhat my toughest client. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, no. 
Yeah, because I wanted to first build a glass house as a guest house, and, and that's what we ended up with. You know, mm -hmm. the, the vernacular shape of the farm buildings, but uh, using just uh, 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 standing seam metal, you know, to create a to to to, to create a simple shape and uh, to use those uh, you know uh, barn door like uh, shades and so uh, and. Uh, and then there was a cow barn next to it, which we bought. Uh, and uh, there used to be the cows on the bottom, and it was uh, and the hay on on the top, and it was uh, was in real bad shape. And uh, and uh, this was after I had announced that I won't be, be seen much out there, and. But then I saw an opportunity that, uh, 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 and this is uh, you know, keeping uh, you know, the historic shape and uh, converting it, and but 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 still keeping uh, the characteristics of the old building. But that I found out that I could make it a place where I could have some fun. You know, where <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where I could swim, yes, uh, and uh, where people could come out and work, and where you could entertain, and uh, behind us is the kitchen and the uh, workout loft, and um, and uh, and uh, uh, I mean we have uh, uh, built a new building. Some of you might know we won actually an AIA award, and uh, I have the. A strong suspicion that we won this award because nobody knew that I did it. You know? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not because it was so good. <laughs> uh, so uh, th then uh, uh, th we came to uh, Fairbanks, 600 North Fairbanks, and uh, you know, this was the time when. The, the, what Blair came and also re, wrote about, you know, there were the concrete buildings with an infill window wall and, uh, and then uh, uh, parking bases, which uh, the city required that they had to have a stone uh, facade. And, and we, we really resort the apartment building there and we made a shaft and we said an apartment building should look deep, different than an office building. You know, the, the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the parking is express, the, 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 the apartments are very transparent, they change between when the light hits them or not, and on the top the amenities have a different expression too. And uh, we, we reduce the, the, the building to its absolute minimum. You know, you know, we, we just did less, and that's why that building could be built for the same amount of money and uh, you know, the, this was also uh, a wish of the client, this were two young guys, uh, 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 which uh, uh, wanted our, uh, uh, our desire to keep the materials the way they are. You know, the, there's, uh, uh, concrete is exposed in the lobby in the apartments. Uh, if somebody doesn't like it, they can paint it or or or, or change it. You know, uh, th this is a re really a, a, a basic minimum from where people. It's like a loft, and this was the idea. This is uh, 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 it's quite different than what we do right now in Michigan Avenue. But you know, the developers always do what the market wants. You know, the architect uh, does what uh, he wants the architecture to be. And in Las Vegas, uh, there were different architects working. We worked with uh, Liebeskind, did a shopping center, and we didn't lean the building because everything uh, leans uh, with uh, Danny Liebeskind, uh, 
V, 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 found this was the best arrangement doing two buildings fairly close to each other and creating the best, uh, the, the best possible views. And we also thought that uh, it's a little symbolic of you know, the guy who stayed out too long the next day in Las <laughs> Vegas and, 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 and was kind of walking down the corridor. And, 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 uh, and, uh, and big, you know, the, 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 the Las Vegas, as you know, gets very hot in summer. The sun is high, so the horizontal shades shade the building. In winter, it's very cold, and the sun n never gets high, and the sun comes inside the building. And uh, what you see in yellow is actually a frit. You can actually look through it. Uh, when you're inside, you hardly don't feel it. And so we, we expanded our vocabulary. Uh, uh, this is, you know, the, on the north side, we don't have any shades. On the other side, we do have the shades and they generally the bedrooms uh, and uh, the kitchens you know so the, 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 that's where the pattern comes from because the apartments change uh, uh, you know the, over the height of the shopping center we couldn't have any apartment so they're very small very tall lobbies uh, there's artwork in there uh, and uh, uh, and uh, you see on the left uh, the, the the lower level is the vehicular entry uh, and uh, there's a, uh, you can actually see here how less colorful the screens are when you look through and you can see uh, behind very well. Uh, and uh, this building was finished about uh, two years ago, a year and a half ago in Warsaw. Uh, it took a long time to build. Uh, 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 it was very interesting that it, uh, it had a great urban setting. It's in the center of Warsaw, where, uh, uh, and this is why, 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 why the building uh, cantilevers in this direction. It, 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 it infringes into the urban space, you know, and it, it, because of the urban space, uh, required a different angling. This is the axis of that street. Uh, uh, there's uh, offices in here. This is a separate office building, and uh, there is a, 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 a courtyard, which also is a public throughway here, uh, which uh, which uh, you know, separates the space, which is in the context of the existing building, with the tower. Uh, the, the building has a very interesting facade. It's a, a further development and a simplification of what we did in Berlin. You see base, I think you see it better here. You know, the the, the uh, multi-story uh, penthouse uh, uh, apartments here. There's a screen on the balconies. Then there are uh, the bays. There are windows or doors behind uh, 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 stainless steel screens, which also prevent from falling out when these windows are open, and uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the building has a, a, a warm color uh, because uh, when we originally won the competition, the client told us he didn't like a glass building, so I, I think we had to make it look like uh, <laughs> something more conventional, and it turned out very well. Uh, this, uh, these are the amenities, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the cantilever has the, the. There was more discussions than on anything on the building was on the color of this. And this, this is a, a picture a bit like all, all the buildings which was made, as you can see, when the building was not <laughs> occupied. And, and, and I, I was there, they, 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 they won an award, and I, I was there, and then I sent my photographer there, and this is what the building looks right now. There's restaurants, and they're, they're very small, and uh, little, uh, uh, little 
specialty shops, uh, little uh, uh, coffee shops, uh, uh, a wine tasting shop, and uh, the, the client bought a sculpture, and uh, it's it's uh, it, it's and, and this is the the biggest merit for the building: how it enriches the urban space, how how it makes the city a better place, because I think this is so important. In, in living too, that when you walk out of your building, that you feel you are there where you are. The most important things, just as important as the apartment, is what the public space is around the building. And uh, no, this is the lobby. Uh, uh, the, the photographer is a perfectionist, so he moved all the furniture out when he took them <laughs> out, out of the building. But, uh, but, um, uh, and, and, and this is what you have as a result of the apartments. No, you, you don't. Uh, the, there is, uh, this is the bay. The, there's windows in the bay. This is one of those uh, big doors which you can open or close or tilt. You swing and. Uh, and there's a shade where you, so everything is, 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 is kind of sort of, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and this is uh, the, 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 the living uh, conditions uh, uh, can, can be changed, you know, and not, and I won't uh, name any names right now, but not every client is like this. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, this this is a, a bu building. Uh, we only did the facade, and the, because they they built that building in Riga, and 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 uh, they got in trouble on the facade, and they did a f international architect facade competition, and I did the competition because I was never able to sell a round building to a client. And, and, and because as we know from Marina City, it, it, it has its problems, especially for an apartment building where the areas become very small towards the back and, uh, and it is not. So uh, the, uh, we, we developed a facade which, uh, uh, which, uh, which is actually shingled. And, uh, and, and, and here you're looking in one direction, and, and, and there's fridged areas, there's big windows, and the, the operable part of the window is in that space between, say, in, in the depths of the shingle. And it's, it's a, 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 again, a, a, a wonderful way to solve this problem of getting air, you know, uh, uh, but also creating a protection from the wind or a protection from the rain and, and giving the building a particular character. Uh, so this, is, uh, this building is just uh, getting occupied in New York. It has a long history. It started in 2004 uh, 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 with a competition which lasted about a year and a half to almost 2006. No, and um, and then by 2008 they wanted to start construction. Well, it didn't last long till the till the crash came, and uh, and I never thought I hear about this building again till about five years ago or six years ago. They called and said we're going to build a building now, uh, and uh, uh, and and they changed it from an apartment building which had a hotel uh, in the lower third to a, a very high rate luxury condominium. We were able, because of code change, to get the city give us uh, uh, 80 feet more height. And, uh, and uh, the, 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 when the, there was a building about this size here, very close, this uh, the municipal parking garage. and and. The, the design trick was to, to curve the building in all corners and to pull its, uh, its uh, body in on the bottom to create an urban plaza, which was a requirement of the city. And, uh, so there was actually very little problem to get the height 
in the in the building of roof because of of its shape. You know, the 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 corners uh, up to a certain height have two story living rooms, you know, and then the apartments get bigger and some of the apartments have a full floor. And, uh, the, the, the glass is curved. It was a, 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 a prerequisite I established and the clients really stuck with it because it's a very tight curve and uh, the metal is stainless steel. And, and, uh, so th this, this, uh, you know, uh, and, um, you know, the, the, the shape of the top is really determined you know, by, by uh, you know, ha bringing the elevator over on and uh, all the requirements with a sprinkler tank and the, uh, and the uh, cooling towers and uh, 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 a, uh, a damper and, and there is a, a roof garden. Uh, which is a requirement in New York for an open space, but it was taken very seriously by the client. And, you know, so it's, it's on the tip of Manhattan. It's two blocks south of the World Trade Center on West Street, and you have a beautiful uh, view of the uh, uh, Statue of Liberty, the Versailles Bridge, and the glass is very transparent. And this is quite frankly all things you can't do anymore with the new energy codes to have glass which is so transparent. You know, or you can only do it if you have uh, a lot less glass. But you, know, you have to always take your chances when they come. <laughs> and, the, the, uh, and this is the, the roof garden of the building. Uh, and uh, and uh, this is uh, on the ground floor, the plaza. And uh, uh, the, the, we haven't taken the final photography because there's still construction going on. They're building actually a bridge across West Street over to Battery Park. And, but this is, will be a very, very uh, lively place. So now we jump again. Uh, this is a building we're doing right now in Frankfurt where, uh, where you know, where uh, the, the Europeans, especially the Germans, they like to be outside. It's a building where the balcony goes all the way around. You know? And uh, this was a design requirement. And the other design requirement, this was the result of a competition, was that the building w was a green building. And, uh, and uh, in for, for doing this, they, they uh, got a uh, uh, a premium in terms of the area they could build. <coughs> and uh, so uh, uh, there's a permit submitted right now and construction is supposed to start in the spring. And, and um, you know, the, 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 this is where a lot of things were able to be achieved, which I wanted to do for a long time. For instance, uh, even on Ohio Fairbanks, we wanted to make this lodges out of steel. This is a steel balcony going all the way around. It's sometimes uh, deeper and sometimes less deep. Uh, the, so it means you can get out of your apartment on one side and then walk around and go in the bedroom uh, or to get to the kitchen or vice versa. You know, so it's the idea to create somewhere a house. This, this is uh, uh, green plants, which are in a matrix, uh, which developed by this uh, French person, Patrick Plank, which now is a, a, a standard product we can have, which, uh, which is irrigated and uh, dewatered and, uh, and uh, will change, obviously, over the season. You know, it, it won't be all green depending on the plants you use. But it's a technical way of, 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 of creating a green building. It's not like you're putting pots on there and then you call up uh, the, 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 the engineer or the, the gardener, you know, like there's buildings in, in Italy, in Milan. They have four gardeners, okay? You know, and and, and, and uh, you know, this also needs maintenance, but this can be maintained from the outside. You don't need to go through the apartment. And um, 
So it's to some degree like everything which is new and experiment and uh, and uh, and uh, it, it, it's uh, it's uh, it's been a, a, a learning process. Uh, 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 I'm sure which uh, will uh, continue. Uh, 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 this is a uh, uh, this is some of the round version of that building. No, it, it, as we all know, apartment buildings are apartment buildings. No, they are, have more or less the same footprints, and uh, and uh, no, this this is uh, this is a, 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 a wave with a uh, sorry uh, with a different. Uh, uh, top, uh, the, the top has a different green. There is a aperture where the plants uh, work on, and there is a different way on the bottom. And uh, this is uh, South Michigan. This is a, a rendering. Uh, the, the, the South Michigan. Uh, is uh, is uh, you know at this point uh, gone through design development, so the building is uh, pretty much uh, 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 determined in terms of what it looked like, and uh, you know th this is a, a, a metal facade. Uh, uh, this is uh, windows which have frames, different colors. Some areas are perforated, and some areas are solid. And uh, uh, the, 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 I think you, you see it more, and, and, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's textured, uh, uh, and you see the, 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 this is a roof garden again. It's the same client like in New York together with two other developers. These are the operable windows. Uh, the, uh, the, there's a limited amount of uh, balconies or lochas. And, uh, and um, the, uh, the, the building has a very small site, uh, so uh, it's, uh, it, it, and it, uh, the, they own this building and obviously they own other buildings on Wabash uh, or, or area on Wabash which the air rights has been put in and the landmarks required in order to, to, and this is the, to keep the Michigan street wall, uh, this is why there's that slot between the building and then the street wall actually ends here. So the, 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 this facade is slightly different, more heavy, has less glass, it's more solid like the old buildings. And, uh, and, uh, and then this building starts out uh, with a soft corner here, with a sharp corner here, and then the back side is the sharp corner here. and. Uh, the, the the soft side is on the back side, and this gives a diagonal line where the building breaks, and where it's here a rectangle which the curve fronts, it becomes a parallelogram on the top. So it's it's actually something very hard to see in a rendering, and and uh, but I think it's something which will be uh, you see it the most in that model uh, photo, uh, which. Uh, shows that you know, the iconic shape of the building would be some of the reversal of the Hancock, which gets smaller towards the top, and this one gets wider to the top. Uh, uh, now that uh, low-cost housing I was talking about is, uh, do I talk too long? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A couple more minutes, I think. Uh, is is that uh, is in in Berlin? This is a actually uh, a, a building. Uh, a lot of things are a long, drawn out process of qualifying, uh, 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 then getting uh, uh, into a into a competition, and then getting down from five to three to two, uh, and. Uh, 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 it, I, I think you you really have to laugh uh, what is that you can do what these buildings can do to people uh, to to do it no? and uh, and uh, uh, the, the, 
So, so these are very small apartments. Uh, uh, you know, there's a, a, a mixture between uh, between a metal facade of expanded metal and uh, 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 microfiber panels, which are very thin. The, the building is constructed out of a out of a prefabricated system, so it's uh, there are grants to to make this possible. This is that uh, that uh, metal facade, and it has a courtyard, has open uh, walkways where you go in, and provides for that time of clientele. I think a wonderful way how how to live. Uh, uh, this is a, a project for a, a typological high rise. It's about 12 to 15 stories tall, and that height is because up to that height you only need one stair and you can have a smaller core. And uh, so the idea was to, to show how uh, a building like that could be done in different location and have a different appearance, but built in a system also is prefabricated and, um, and, uh, and, 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 and can be repeated. And uh, so the, 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 the repetition uh, creates in some economy. So, so we, we decided to make this uh, you know, the four schemes. One is winter, this is uh, spring, this is summer, and the, and the, and the the orange is the fall, and uh, there's different balcony, co uh, co which always with the idea in mind that when you are in these balconies, since the apartments are so small, so are very close, that you have a certain privacy to the screens. You know? And um, uh, this is uh, this is something which is in progress right now. This is in a suburb of Stuttgart, about 20 minutes with the with the train, with a high-speed train. Uh, and uh, this is a town which uh, used to have a lot of industry. And this was uh, the site of one of the biggest industries who went bankrupt uh, about 15 years ago because they didn't keep up with the times. You know, and they made big uh, 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 machines for, for agriculture, for road building, uh, and, and they just uh, uh, were not competitive anymore. In, in, in this part, there's a lot of uh, communication technology. There's TESAT, which is the biggest satellite manufacturer. And, and, uh, and, uh, but uh, 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 so, so the, 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 the site is all under one ownership, and, and there's a mixture, uh, I, I think I can explain it here, of uh, housing, uh, different uses, uh, uh, high-end houses, mid-term houses, uh, 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 low-cost houses, and student houses. This is uh, a location of a university. Uh, this is existing buildings. This is a tower with hotel and offices. And uh, this is a, a, a central space uh, which uh, has a, a, a assembly, communication, entertainment facility, a museum, and below a market. And I, I think what ties it all together is that it, it, uh, it, uh, you know, the the, the 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 traffic is all kept uh, around it, and this is all a park-like setting, but with vehicle access to all the facilities. Uh, this is the, the first uh, kind of project in more detail, because in order to build this, uh, there, there's like uh, uh, 800 cars, which all are for people who work over here. And uh, so there's a parking garage plant here for that amount of cars which, uh, in order to make it acceptable, has this thin layer of apartments on the side, and on the other side. And uh, you know, the actual parking garage is here, and, and uh, you know, the, 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 
the mesh, the expanded metal, uh, you know, allows to here it to be naturally ventilated, and here it becomes a shape, and there, uh, this, and, and there, so there, there could also be some uh, uh, kind of office uh, uh, living uh, assemblies for startups, and so it's it's it, it's it, it's a building type which which uh, hasn't been been used. Uh, this is just a quick go around, and I won't say much. You know, the, the tall building, because the, the city is about 40 meters uh, from higher mid-range mountains surrounded, and the 100-meter tower makes it as you approach the city, gives it gives it as as a sign that it is important. So this, you, there's a small river, uh, which uh, becomes the attraction together with that uh, uh, quartier plots, as we call it. Uh, this is a, there's a amphitheater with a stage near the river. You see the market and the museum. This is all not a design, this is just a vision. You know, this is a, a residential court, uh, uh, and this is a, a, in between the buildings. Uh, 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 a road where you can drive, uh, uh, where you can park, and uh, where you can just lay on the lawn. Uh, and then uh, I threw in a couple projects uh, which uh, uh, have uh, kind of uh, uh, more uh, radical ideas about uh, uh, you know, taller buildings being a little bit more innovative. This was a project in Seoul, uh, uh, which uh, had uh, in t uh, you know, two aspects which were interesting. It had an inner and an outer facade, and it allowed uh, the, the balconies more or less like clip-on uh, parts to be, to, to, to be there where the buyer wanted them. And, uh, and it, it, it had different gardens which uh, were going to be used for the residents or become amenities. And, uh, and uh, uh, somebody asked us, is this on the spire side? And this has a little bit to do with it and uh, this was supposed to be more reasonable. You know, this is not the same height, but it's actually two buildings. Uh, uh, and, uh, and you see it's actually taking the building apart and then creating apartments you know, which have all of them double exposure and then creating between amenities you know, which uh, can be in, in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, I mean, uh, this, we did a lot in the Middle East, uh, and all the stuff came. This was in Dubai. Uh, there are. This was some of the uh, the desert version of Sony. This this. There, there are four apartment buildings in the slope. There's uh, two hotels and two office buildings on the corner. There's an apartment building on the top. And uh, it, it had those horizontal plates. Uh, and that's where the color came from, because this was the reflections of the color. And in the center, it uh, had a shopping center. And it had a roof with, uh, with uh, 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 with uh, tubes uh, uh, filled with uh, water, which created a lot of the energy, and it provided the shading for these places. So it was a combination of many uh, things, uh, and th 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 this idea of integrating uh, the, 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 the measures to improve uh, uh, the uh, sustainability of the building f found 
the biggest expression in this project, which was in Rosh al -Khaimah. It's also one of the Emirates. The, uh, this, was a, this was a part of uh, 20 towers. Uh, this was the tallest one. It was 880 meters tall. And, uh, and uh, this was a frame, 125 meters in diameter. So there was a mast. And from that mass, the, the exterior framework was suspended. There were diaphragms every 24 meters. Uh, the apartments and penthouses were on top, and then there was a hotel, and down, down there were offices, and down there was shopping. And uh, the, the buildings were standing in a, in a, in a, in a, in a water, in a lake, which uh, uh, had a lot of salt content, and with the heat, it, uh, it, it created a heat which went up this tube, the structural tube, uh, and uh, uh, created a lot of speed, uh, drove turbines, and created part of the energy of the building. And, uh, and uh, in addition to that, because of the heat, it, it created humidity, and water was collected on the bottom of it. And, uh, I, and uh, uh, you don't see it on these uh, images, but uh, the, the facade of the building had big energy seals <laughs> which moved with the sun and, uh, and, and, and created uh, 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 made energy. So it was, was a time. It, 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 it was fantastic. You know, the, 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 I, I couldn't believe you know, how much progress we could have made. And, and it came to end like everything came. came came to an end, but, uh, uh, and now the last slide, oh, uh, I thought I had to say something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, obviously, I, 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 I did this after I saw what, uh, what, what was supposed to be done on the site, and, uh, uh, and uh, I'm, you know, as you've seen, there's been a lot of now publicity. You probably have seen this movie by uh, Nathan Eddy, uh, a wonderful piece, and I'm not showing it. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I, we found that there is one place on the building's corner where with very little loss of space, you could add the building. and and. Uh, I show a lot of the things to my friend Werner Sobeck, and when I showed him this once, he said, "It looks like it always been there." Mm -hmm. you know? and, uh, you know, and I, uh, 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 and um, you know, the, it, it, uh, uh, but uh, uh, you know, it, it obviously had apartments on the top, and it it it, it had uh, in the in the lower part a hotel. And uh, uh, the lower portions of that building served as the hotel functions, and the rest could be uh, major uh, uh, large uh, floor plate spaces where where people, uh, you know, smaller or a bigger group, you know, <laughs> Amazon could go there too. <laughs> no, and and uh, and uh, and uh, that uh, I think. The article player came and wrote, said it different. The idea was uh, uh, that that the building actually be, uh, because we didn't go quite far enough, uh, the building would be opened here. And this would really become a public place. You could go through all the time, all the time, you know, uh, uh, be because uh, the, the, there would be a, a thin glass wall which makes those spaces uh, 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 enclosed. And, uh, and so as we know, every time you remodel a building and you update it, you know, that it, 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 it would keep its character and would even serve more as, 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 as a place which enriches the central area of the city. Because uh, you know, we, we, we don't, we don't, we haven't created any more of the spaces. You know, those plazas, you know, in the Civic Center, uh, what used to be the first 
National Plaza now, it's called the Chase or whatever, right now. They, they, they're not used anymore, nobody goes there anymore. They, 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 we used to go there, we, we were working in this building at that time. Here we used to go there for lunch every, every time. You know, the, 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 the city gets also one-sided because it's not a place where you feel well. You know, there's too many people in places, so there got to be more places where, 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 where this becomes attractive and uh, and um, I just uh, hope that you know that uh, it, 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 it would be a, a, a wonderful thing to do something and uh, and, uh, and and this is this because what would go there uh, would just be as we seen on the plans, is a one massive building, more likely uh, three or four buildings, and it would take 30 years before they all built, because you don't need a lot of these buildings. So thank you, and... Uh, <laughs> all right, we're gonna get the house lights up. And um, anybody who needs to leave, this is a good time to do it. But you're going to miss the best parts. <laughs> Only one person turned back and gave me a little look. Well, first of all, Helmet, thank you very much. That was a great talk. Um, and it was, it was wonderful to see you concentrate on housing. Um, and, and we'll come back to that. I, I think that or maybe we'll start with a couple of questions, but we'll come back to that. It's obvious that you believe that cities are going to require more and more housing. How do you feel, uh, let's talk about 1,000 Michigan for a minute, South Michigan, when they're at that big a scale, right, and they change the landscape so much, or like the, the spire towers that are going up in New York, those yeah. little sliver buildings. How do you feel about those, not in terms of the architecture of the indi individual building, but in terms of the way they change the urban character of the city? Well, I, I think... Um, and you have to hold the mic up. Close. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there's only this much you can do uh, on, on a project. And uh, I think... Uh, 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 I hate to say it's so blunt, but the, the developer on a building like Thousand Michigan is only interested in how much and for how much he can sell the apartments. He, he really doesn't care what happens on the street. I mean, there is some space on the street. There is between uh, the building and, and uh, uh, the building to the north, a 20-foot space. You know, so there, by code, there needed to only be a 8-foot space. and and. Uh, uh, I, I, I hope that something happens like happened in Warsaw, because that pass, uh, you can actually get over to Wabash, and that space, you can get to the Port Cochere. Uh, you know, the building does have a second entrance in, in the back, which makes it very different from other buildings, because you're not allowed on Michigan Avenue to make a stop, right? No, no, and, um, uh, 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 the, the, uh, I, I, you know, the Michigan Avenue in, in that part where we are right now, because we, we used to have for, for, uh, for 20 years I was working in this building, right now, from 1967 to, to 77, close to 80. And, and Michigan Avenue, there, there was nothing. There was no restaurant. There was was absolutely nothing, right? No, and 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 now, uh, I mean, there's almost too much now, right? No, <laughs> right? No, and you know, there's oh, oh, no, and 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 it's a little touristic, you know. Obviously, across from Millennium Park. So down there, I think it's a much better place to live, right? No, and uh, and it's less crowded, uh, and uh, and. Uh, you know, you, uh, you, you have a, a never 
a danger that somebody is going to put a building in front of you or next to you because you know, you know the, the, the building the north is a condominium to the south it's already all built you know and nothing will come down so uh, uh, a lot of this as I said you know, takes a couple of years you know that you know in in the uh, date in Warsaw you know that building is is, uh, is the developers where they have Developer were just two rich guys who were in the in the oil and gas business, right? No, no. And, and I know they they actually paid cash for it to a certain point when they got a bank when they saw that there was a success. No, uh, the, 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 these things don't happen anymore. No, they uh, and, and they were really interested in doing a good building, and this what you not always find. No. No, and so uh, the, 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 there has to be a team. The, there has to be a client. The, there has to be a architect. The engineers are important. Uh, 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 the, the, the only this way can 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 you do a job building. And and so just to, to keep with what you're saying there, let's keep on the team for a second. You yeah. were saying there's that 20 foot gap yeah. between the building. W do you think that the other member, the silent member of the team here, which would be the city, do you think that Chicago and other cities, but let's just talk about Chicago because we're talking about that building, do you think the city needs to revisit its zoning or its building envelope requirements? I know there's more than zoning isn't the only one, but the, all of the various things that enable the city to uh, maybe like you were talking about the trade-offs of the plazas in New York, right, that allow you to go taller. Do you think that the city needs to be more vigorous, this city needs to be more vigorous in how it approaches that sort of thing? Well, I mean, we, we, uh, this was a competition, and after the competition we dealt with the city, and it took for like six, eight months before we, 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 we solved these issues uh, in terms of landmarks. The height. You know, we started out a little over a thousand feet. We ended up with uh, 850, uh, and this was in an area where the present zoning allowed uh, about 420 feet. This, this is in the Michigan Avenue guidelines, which everybody, which were never really approved, but which every, everybody considers like a law. You know, so. Uh, so, in in comparison to to, to to projects we did in the in the past, like you know uh, Fairbanks or uh, or even the very earlier projects uh, of the office buildings, where the, the city didn't take any influence. You could build what you wanted as long as it fitted the zoning code. But the zoning code has been changed. The zoning code now. Uh, you, you you have to actually buy if you want to b uh, pay if you build more, you know. Uh, and obviously, it's all supposed to go to some good purpose, you know. And it's like with every 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 uh, fund, you know. Is it really get, getting there? No, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> no. So, do you think then just to to follow that up with a slightly different thing. You were talking about it takes a good client, it takes a good engineer, a good architect, the city to be involved. Do you, and, and you were, you seem to be lamenting a little bit that in earlier days things produced better buildings. Do you, what do you think the state of contemporary architecture is? Is it harder now to be an architect than it was, say, um, in 1979 when you switched the name of the firm and it became Murphy on? Is it, is it more complicated? Uh, do you do you as an architect feel that it's more difficult to achieve the buildings you want to achieve, or not, or more promising because of all the new technologies? Uh, I, I I think everything in the world is today more difficult, you know? and uh, and 
I can tell you I wouldn't want to do this thing a second time. <laughs> no, no, no. And uh, uh, because, uh, because I know it's not just myself. It's, uh, I, I had some just the way from the one year and staying till my comic place was finished to, to the, the clients I have. The, 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 I, I, I tend to think, you know, the, the, it, it's also I'm, I'm, I'm really too old for that, you know. <laughs> and so, so uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to change the world at this point, but I think that uh, we can, uh, I, in in a lot of ways, can can do a lot of good, you no, know, you no, know, and. And I think a lot of architects do the same thing. I think there is a, a little bit too much uh, 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 and, and I can say this. You know, I never did this to be famous. I, I did this Oops. because I had a, just a great time. Okay, <laughs> you, know, you know. And I think there's a lot of people now, especially in the architecture field, who who, 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 who really, when they do a building, that they think as much, what could they do, and how would that make them more known and more famous? Uh, and I think this is possible through, uh, I think I alluded to this, in this digital driven architect where you can create incredible spectacles. You know, I make a lot of drawings. You know, uh, uh, and when you draw, you, no matter how good you draw, you can, you, it starts with your mind, it goes with your hand, it ends up on the paper, right? And it works back and forth, and 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 and. But if, when you only work on a machine, uh, and, and and because you now I say, well, well what's what does this thing look like on the computer? Now we obviously do a lot of things. You have to do a lot of things. A lot of clients look at this. That's why all the buildings look the same. You you go and look at these magazines, these unpaid projects. You don't see the difference. Uh, be because they never get to that point that the aesthetic has to first, it's not coming from an aesthetic point of view, in my opinion, but has to come out of the way you design a building, the materials you use, the technology you use, th that you know what the balcony looks like, and that, you know, like uh, I showed in some of the strikes. So you, th there is no way around it. And somebody can do it later. So you still draw, you still hand draw in your design process? Not, not the finished building project, but when you're in the beginning of your design process, you're still drawing. Sometimes I make a drawing because I'm uh, at midnight or because I feel like I haven't done one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating now, but uh, I, that's, I, I don't read a lot. I'm, every time I read, I, I put the book aside or a magazine aside and I make a drawing. Because <laughs> How many of you are familiar with Helmut's drawings? Well, those of you who, yeah, clap, because s sitting in front of you, sitting in front of you is one of the 20th and 21st centuries, because he kind of spans on both sides of that, uh, 20, 21st century architectures most accomplished, most beautiful renderers. A drawing style that's very distinctive, very unique. It's not just a, a, a renderer, it's actually also uh, uh, thinking how you put the yeah, building you together. Can see it in your no, 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 because the, these buildings, uh, they, they all put together out of very similar things. And, and, and to put them together in a in a perfect way. Uh, this is what I meant. You, you, you never probably can be satisfied be, because there's always progress. You no, know, there's always progress. 
the way you put, uh, when you deal with fabrics, it's a different way how you put it together. And you need specialists. That's where you need a guy like Sobek, right? No? Be because he knows that, you know. Uh, uh, the way you do glass, you can curve glass right now, you need less support. You know? the, 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 the architect, if, if he just gets uh, is satisfied to deal with what a building looks like, he is going to lose the control over the process how to build a building. And, and that's what's actually happening in a lot of things. The curtain wall guys, they come and say, you don't have to draw up the curtain wall. I mean, we got all the details here. They, they give you the drawings of the last building. So it might change a little bit, but uh, uh, and, 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 and the architects are happy because they don't have to do this. They deprive themselves of the most wonderful thing, that, that you get an idea, you build a model, you make a drawing. You know, you, 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 you know the, the, I mean, I, I sometimes say, you know, take a, t t take a the model shop is busy, okay? I said, t take some pieces of paper, cut them, glue them together. <laughs> What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> right? I, uh, I, I know what you mean. Um, and I have so many questions I want to ask you. And I'm really, I have a, this, I got to show everybody. I came here with pages and pages of questions to ask you. Um, That's the best interviews when somebody says, I guess, you answered all the questions. Yeah, well, so you're going through a lot of those. Um, but I also want to be able to get to, the, to let the audience answer some questions. But I, gotta, I have to ask you a couple easy ones, um, fun ones, and then we'll turn it over to the audience. They're short. I just short answer. So Dankmar Adler, a very accomplished engineer and architect. Mies van der Rohe, reasonably accomplished architect. Um, Helmut Jan. Uh, reasonably uh, accomplished architect. So is there something about Chicago that sucks German talent uh, <laughs> into the city and transforms it into something? I, I you know, had a scholarship, a Rotary scholarship, and I had to apply to more than one place. And fortunately, I got selected to Chicago. I always had it in my mind, if I wouldn't go to Chicago, I wouldn't come in. You know, and, uh, uh, I must say that I had connection to people who I knew from studying, or I worked for like a half a year, to three quarter of a year, which were in Chicago or uh, went to Chicago. Uh, one of my best friends in college, he came here a year before. Um, um, uh, uh, I, I, I think it, 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 it was just different, you know. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, at that time we had, we had uh, a lot of Europeans, uh, Germans and Dutch and Swedish and Italian, you know. And uh, uh, now you see more of, of Asians and Chinese and whatever. You know. um, I, I, I don't. Things I answered your question, but uh, <laughs> uh, 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 it's it's uh, uh, you know, it, it's uh, I think I asked you. It, it, it's uh, the, when I came, when I look back at Chicago. And you know, when, when you look at the skyline, there are a lot more buildings. I, mean, I remember I walked across the lake, and uh, the Prudential Building was the tallest building. There was no buildings there. The Civic Center was under construction. Hancock was only built later. And uh, but there, 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 there have not been a lot of buildings. That they might be pretty high, whatever. Like the Trump Tower is higher than the Hancock and whatever, so because it has the spire, but the Hancock is still, or the Sears is still more defining, in terms of what you, what what you identify with Chicago, 
and 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 you know, and everybody always talks about me and what I, I I haven't done anything which is defining on the skyline of the city. You know, I'm, I'm not losing any sleep over this, you know, right? You no, know? and 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 South Michigan will, will be will, will be a fine building, but I don't think it will be a great building. Okay, you know? mm -hmm. because it's it's just a, not the building type, which which uh, lends itself uh, not to uh, to um, the, 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 it doesn't have to you know, the, the 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 Mies buildings 860 880 on Lake Drive they still look very very special and there's something in them right you know you drive by you know, they they're not in the best shape or whatever and you you go inside and it's a mess right you no know? and, <laughs> and, and, and but but, but uh, they, 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 they do something, right? No? It's, it's, I don't know what it is, you know? And, and, uh, and uh, the, the, the true value of what the value of the buildings is and with them, the architect or the know-how of the architect comes only with time. No, uh, 20 years or whatever, no? And, 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 and just think of when modernism was dead, when Stanley had a ground hall, he said it came up, I say it came down, right? You know, uh, the, the, all this is gone. You know, those buildings look like old ladies with too, too much uh, uh, jewelry, right? No, right? No, 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 no. And, and, uh, no. <laughs> and, and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, I mean, I would love one of, of those green towers in Chicago, right? Something which breathes fresh air and wh whatever, right? Where you, you know, it looks like houses on top of each other, right? No? And, uh, and uh, but um, uh, it, it, uh, it um, do things happen or they, or, or they don't happen or they happen somewhere else? And, uh, and, and Well, let's give the audience a chance. Um, we don't have a whole lot of time left. Um, but let's give the audience a chance. I'm going to start toward the back because it never gets, this gentleman right in front of you there, the front always gets all the questions. Yes, I have a question. Uh, your question is, you mentioned we need a good client. Uh, you also need consumer, and I look around the city and I see this fantastic development that's going on in the, the South Loop, the West Loop, Open Market, River North. Do you envision that we're going to have a bubble? A bubble? Do, do you bubble. think we're going to have a development bubble? Too much. Uh, I mean, I mean the, the fact there's there's a lot of buildings going on. But these are only buildings, and this is not architecture. Okay, some of this stuff It's not architecture. You no, know, the uh, yeah, what's going on in the on the, on the west side with Google, I mean, uh, and and McDonald is just absolute muddy ogre. You know, right? You no, know, I mean, I mean, it, it, I, I, I'm sure I'm not making any friends. You know, saying, <laughs> say, saying this, but 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 but. Uh, you know, and 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 and, and uh, the, when I think, you know, after the time I had something to say, and, and these buildings we did, Xerox and and the Board of Trade, One South Wagger, uh, the Ogilville Transportation Center, Northwestern Terminal, as we called it, the the the, the, the clients were real builders. They they loved. The buildings, they, they, they went out on the site and went under construction, whatever. Now, the, the, they only sit in front of their computers and figure out what the profit is. Right, no, right, no, no, no. And, uh, 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 and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not out to change it. And, and uh, uh, and, and one day time will change. Somebody will, will 
you know, it's, 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 it's the world always changes, right? You know, it, it goes up and down, left and right, and 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 um, and uh, it, uh, right now, I, I, uh, I mean, the, 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 there's a lot happening on a small scale, and uh, and but on the big scale, uh, you know the. the, the the, the, you know, when, when I when I say you know there won't be a great building, don't, I don't want this misunderstood. But I know exactly what it can be. It can be better what it could have been, right? No, no. But is it perfect? No, it's no way perfect, right? I mean, we, we had a this competition lasted one year. We we had a couple designs, which probably were stronger, you know, and uh, 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 so you make the best out of it, you know. Let's try one more question. Yes, sir, in the back right there. Here. And this is going to be the last question, so keep it brief if you could. What is it about the John Hancock Center? What is it about the John Hancock Center that really makes it stand out to you? Well, my, in my opinion, when people ask me what is the defining building in Chicago, I, uh, I do the Hancock. The Hancock went actually up when I got there, started 66. The, the, there were a lot of problems with the caissons and whatever. And, and uh, I think it has just this guts of the structure and, and, and uh, uh, the, but but the amazing, uh, and I remember when I was in IIT, and you know uh, uh, the, the, there was a lot of criticism, and I did a study season, never finished it, where where this all was more in order, you know, and whatever, and, and it's amazing how well the Hancock Building has aged. It just looks like uh, it it has only been there for a couple of years. You know, the, the facade and and, 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 uh, and it was a great idea and, it, 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 and you know it it, 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 I wouldn't say an accident, it, it, but it, it, it was originally an office building and an apartment building and they wanted to buy the uh, casino club. The casino club didn't sell and so Bruce Graham or Faust Khan or both, they just said, well, let's put that thing on top of it. And then they said, but now we have a real problem, right? Because that building <laughs> needs something special to hold it up, right? And they came up with uh, this very bold structure. See, and, and the Hancock still shows a difference between where the parking is, where the offices are, where the apartments are, where the facilities are for, for uh, at the top, the restaurant and the observatory. Uh, but you look at the Trump Tower, and everything from the parking garage to the hotel to, to the to the to the to the uh, 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 to the to the apartments looks exactly the same. And I know that because my office window is right in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> but the benefit I have in the afternoon when the sun hits the Hancock. I'm facing north. I have sun in my office. So, <laughs> so um, I want to confirm what you just said about the Hancock, because every morning when I wake up and stare out of 910 Lakeshore, I'm staring right at it, right at it. And it's the most exciting way to wake up that you can imagine. It has a lot of depths. You know, yeah. the, the big columns and the smaller columns and the facade and, the uh, and, and, and the taper. You know, the, the taper is, is, is just a, a very, very memorable thing. Why is the, the Washington Monument? You know, they, they didn't invent it. You know, it was there, you know, right? No, no. They, so, they didn't invent it. No, no. On that note, I think we're going to have to, to uh, say that I'm, I'm going to say that that's an, ex that's an uplifting note, that there is, there is still great architecture to be made and great architecture to be experienced. And thanks to you, 
we have a lot more of it than we would had you not been in this profession, even if you don't want to do it a second time. You've been very productive the first time around, and we want to thank you for that very much, and thank you for tonight. I thank all of you and Lynn Osmond and everybody at the Chicago Architecture Foundation for coming out this evening, and have a great evening. Thanks for coming. Thank